What's up, everybody? True Internet coming at you today. We got another Marvel Crush Protocol video, and this time we're going to be talking about the next Spider Foe coming to the game, Electro. And uh, boy, we have a lot to talk about. We have a decent amount to talk about this character and just Spider Foes in general. We just got a card. Uh, some of the tactics cards talked about over on Nate Gamer Guild's uh, YouTube channel. I have some of those cards here, and we can go ahead and talk about those after we talk about Electro. Because these cards are very, very interesting, and uh, I cannot wait to go over these cards. Honestly, like this is, this is sick. Well, if you guys can't do me a favor, like this, like comment and subscribe, do all those things y'all gotta do. I'm always gonna have that Marvel Crisis Protocol content for you guys, okay? And uh, I can't wait to talk about Electro Spider Foes. Like I said, one of my favorite affiliations in the game, and I can't wait to talk about this guy. So let's go three four three uh, for defenses. Uh, Electro Max. Oh, his name is Max Dillon. That's funny. Man, I need to I need to brush up on my comic, uh, <laughs> my comic stuff. Uh, three, four, three. So uh, three for the physical, four for the energy, three for mystic. So I love that they gave him four energy defense. He's shooting electricity, energy, all that stuff. So so properly accosted there. Um, you know, um, could be could help out. Could play pay to flips pretty well if you want to play him as a pay to flip character. You're not saying you should, but he does have four energy defense. So if you want to play him on spider portals, not that I should say, not that you should, but or will, or whatever, he can flip those, right? So, with four dice. So, that's really good. Uh, health six, he's a fourth threat, another fourth threat in the game. Man, I, I swear, like, there's just so many fourth threats right now, man. This is insane. Uh, size two, and he does move small. One thing to note, he is on a big base. I did see him at Adepticon this year inside the, inside the display case. He is on a big base. Um, so being on the big base moving small is not that big of a deal. It's something I wish Mysterio had, honestly. I think Mysterio needed a big base for him. So he can do uh, – I think he'd be, he could play a little more efficiently. Uh, with him being on a small base moving small, he's just – he suffers from that. And uh, they did a really good job with Electro being on a big base small mu small move. He's not going to have those uh, those issues, right? Unless, you know, he has things that, you know – you know, if he doesn't have teleportation or anything like that, then he's screwed, right? But, like, with Mysterio, he does have a movement shenanigan on his superpower where, like, if he rolls dice, does damage, he can move himself or whatever the case may be. So let's see if Electro has something like that in this in, on his kit. Um, electric Discharge. Uh, range 4, 5 dice, energy attack, uh, game party damage dealt, and no shocker at all. Uh, <laughs> he will be handing out shock. Deservedly slow. D slow deservedly slow um you know handing off shock is a uh, really cool i mean i could see him being a nightmare pairing him up with Di uh, crimson dynamo on an e uh just both these characters handing off shock granted why would you play both but i mean the more the merrier i guess if you would keep if you keep handing off shock to these attrition teams that put out a lot of damage and a lot of dice like these if you run those two men damn you're gonna have a really good day now granted that's running two small characters i mean it's that's running two characters on big bases with small moves um, normally, I don't like running that many characters with small moves. You know, I, they're typically normally run one on my roster. I normally don't go to two. But like I said, if you're playing on a map E or, you know, Gamma, Demon, stuff like that, um, Research Station, of course, everyone's going to be in the middle. These two guys will excel, Dynamo and Electro, because of this, right? Granted, Electro doesn't have a beam, but the fact that he's handing out Shock, you know, can slow down those attrition teams just a tad bit. So that's really good. You're just, if you combo the two, it would be really insane. Overload the grid. Uh, range three, spender, six dice, four power cost. When creating the dice pool for this attack, you may destroy a terrain feature size three or less within three of this character if you do add dice to the attack roll to the destroy terrain's, terrain feature size. That's really cool. So he's going to be destroying terrain pieces. Now, funny enough, you pair this up with Magneto's leadership. Well, guess what? You destroy that size three. You disperse all the power. And basically, you can give one to Electro, which basically turns this into a... Three power cost spender. Now, why did I come with that math? Well, when you destroy a terrain feature using Magneto's leadership, not that you would be playing these two together, but this would be a fun little interaction. Um, destroy the terrain feature, Magneto's leadership goes off, hand out a power to each character, give it to Electro. Well, you just got a power back, so basically, effectively, it's a three power cost spender in Magneto's leadership. So that's really cool. Uh, but yeah, you, you add dice equal to the dice pool, so that makes this a nine dice energy attack. Um, six stuff. That's all this really does here. Um, I still think it's pretty damn good. Um, you know, it's an energy attack where energy defenses are not the greatest at all in this game. I mean, they're like average to below average. You know, some people have above average in this game, but if you look at the dice pool compared to physical and energy, it's 
energy is kind of on the lower end, so you should be doing a decent amount of damage with this attack. Um, there is no built-in rerolls or anything like that, but you get like nine dice and you just throw it, and it's not really doing anything else. Um, but hey, you should be dropping a character with this, or at least getting them close to death and all that other kind of stuff. Ride the wires. Uh, two power cost. Uh, choose, uh, choose a terrain feature size two or greater within three of this character. This character drops all objective tokens it is holding, then is placed within two of the chosen tr- of the oh my god of the chosen terrain feature. This super arc only means once per turn. Now this is where I go back to the Magneto leadership, right? So we all know Magneto's constructs, I believe, are size two. Well, guess what? Magneto, you can just place a construct. He can go within three of it. Well, this is what you got to do first. You have to break terrain somehow, right? And granted. I'm not saying you can <laughs> – this is an option, right? If you want to have some fun and explore um, a leadership with this, char- with this, with this character, Magneto is probably the one. Um, you just find you find a way to throw a terrain piece with uh, mags or whoever else, right? You give the power to uh, Electro here. Now, what you end up doing is placing the construct within three of Electro, and then Electro can spend two power, tr- teleport himself within two. Now, think about how far you're getting up the board here. Within two of that terrain piece, which is within three of Electro, on his big base, and you could just be in the game, just in in people's faces. Like on top of that, with how much terrain pieces, how many terrain pieces no, people normally play with in this game, you could be going in a lot of different directions. So this character doesn't have that issue really of getting to places on the board as long as he's within three of a terrain piece. He can just go teleport, get there, and be in your face and do something right. So. I can see this character playing because of the superpower just anywhere, really. Like what I mean by that is, is like you know, on 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 maybe uh, on D shaped secures or, or, or bees and stuff like that, right? Like normally characters that move small with this, with like a big base or a small base, have a hard time playing on those wider secures or wider extracts or whatever. Normally they excel when the game is narrowed down. This guy, he doesn't give a shit. Like if it's size two or greater, he just teleport within there, be within three, and you're fine. And you could just get get in the game, basically. It this is a really really strong. Um, I think this is a really good superpower and very fun and very thematic. They really captured Electro here with this superpower. So really good stuff here. I'm loving this character already. My mind is going in a lot of different places. You know, not just Spider Foes, but like I said, Mag's Brotherhood or something else. Something that can give him power in humans. You can play him in humans and, and do some crazy shenanigans there. That's really cool too. Uh, Live wire. Uh, two power cost. Uh, when an enemy character ends a movement within three of this character, this character may use superpower. Roll four dice. Uh, hit crit on a hit and a crit. Uh, the cover, character suffers one damage. So anybody that moves in front of this character, basically you just roll this. They take damage. It is what it is. Um, pretty good stuff there. Live wire. Uh, electrostatic. One power cost. After an attack targeting this character is resolved, it may use a superpower. If the if the attacking character is within three. It suffers one damage and gains shock. That is pretty damn good. For one power cost, handing out shock once you're attacking him? Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This character is really good. And he, of course, he's got flight. And he's got and he's immune to shock, so he can go over buildings. Like This character is absolutely fantastic. Like I, I love everything about Electro. Like, he's not just a character I can... I, I, I can think, like, I want to play him in other places now, right? Like, it's not just spider Foes. Like, granted, I think he'll do fantastic in spider Foes, But, like, other leaderships, like, in humans, mags, um, anyone that can hand out power, basically, in this, in, in, with leaderships, he's going to excel and be pretty damn good. I mean, these power costs aren't, ex- these superpowers aren't that expensive. Two, two, one, that's nothing. That's literally, you can, you on turn two, these are all live. Everything, not I mean, not everything is live, right? But yeah, everything is basically live. You can't do it all, right? Depending on how much power you gain, all that kind of stuff. You have all these options: turn two or turn one, depending on however you decided to give him power or whatever the case may be. And he could just be all over the board doing doing things. Now, is he going to be dropping characters, dazing them, KOing them? Probably not, right? Because he doesn't have any built-in rerolls or like any dice consistency or anything like that. But what he will be is a constant menace on the board, trying to hand out shock, being all over the board, harassing characters, um, you know, trying to get extracts and trying to move around and just trying to do things and trying to hand out shock to slow down the attrition. 
that's how I see this character playing. And it's and it's so fun. Like I think this character is very damn fun and he's very unique. So they did a really good job here. Let's go to the injured side. I don't think anything changes here. His health stays the same. Um and this is the opposite of, of the Shocker review I did, right? Shocker, I feel like, is a solid character, very boring card, right? This character, I feel like, is very solid, but there's a lot going on. You see what I'm saying? Like, this character is just, he's, he's flexible, right? Like, he, he, like, Shocker is just, like, good, right? He's probably, like, good in a few places. I can see Electro being great in a lot of places because of everything that he could do here. And he's not, there's nothing boring on the card. He's very, very interesting. Uh, right, the wires is nutty. Like, I mean, this is just insane. Um, but yeah, nothing really changes on the injured side. Everything stays the same. Um, really good stuff here. So let's get to the cards that were revealed on Gamer Guild's chat. Um, let's start with the uh, founding members. I think this was revealed on his uh, channel. Uh, during the power phrase, an allied Sp spider foes character may play this card. During this round, each time an enemy character suffers damage from an allied effect. Oh. Choose up to one of the listed. Okay, hold on. Choose up to one of the listed allied characters that is within two of the enemy character. The enemy character gains the special condition shown below, corresponding to the chosen allied character. Okay, so Sandman, you gain slow. Vulture, you gain bleed. Mysterio, you gain hex. Otto Octavius, you gain stun. Electro, you gain shock. Craven the Hunter, you gain poison. So it seems like to me like where they're headed with, with, with foes in general, they want them to hand out a lot of conditions and um, like a mixture of like, you know, objective play and aggro and also, the, you know, attrition and, and objective play. But they wanted to it, – it, 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 it seems like they want them to be like this, hey, I want to hand out conditions. I want to maintain the point lead, also the kind of stuff. Um and just have all these little unique, uh, like, character plays, you know, within three and all sorts of kind of stuff. Like, very okay, – I'm trying to find the word. Like, very, like, like hey, I got, I got trapped. Like, you're setting up traps, right? Like, you're just setting up traps for your opponent. I think that's the word I'm looking for. And, and that's the reason why I appeal to them so much. Like, setting traps is my thing. If I can just play an affiliation and do that all the time, it would be 100% great. Like – um, and it looks like they're headed in that direction. Like, so let's let's see what the requirements are. During the power phase – uh, may play this card. Okay, cool. During this round, each time an enemy character suffers damage from allied effects, choose one of the following. Okay, so you just gotta be within. You just gotta be within two of the character. Uh, during the power phase, um, any any spider folk can play this card. Um, so that's really good. That's really cool. Um, so this is probably like a turn two to three to four kind of card that you would want to play, like when you're deep in a game and characters have to interact with you. Now, granted, you have to take damage. Um to do these effects, but if I can go out and hand out conditions to, like, Web Warrior characters to, to hamper them a little bit, I'm going to do that, right? Because I'm going to force them to attack me, and I'm going to force them to deal with me, right? Because I want to take, I want to control all the uh, the extracts, right? And if I'm playing against Web Warriors, it's like, okay, you got to get the extracts off of me, so I'm definitely going to be in your face, and um, you got to attack me, right? You Once you attack me, now I'm going to give you the special condition, and you're going to have to eat it, right? Um so that's really good. Like this is a this is a a decent card. This is fun. Something I could play around with, um, you know, during like a casual night or something like that. To see how good this card does. Um, do I see it being in my ten? Probably not. Um, but if I'm messing around, I could probably see some potential with this card. All right. So Mass Menace, uh, Web Warriors card. Uh, during the power phase, up to three allied Web Warrior characters may spend one power to each to play this card. For each character that played this card. Place a camera token onto the battlefield and not within three of another camera. Okay. While with, this is okay, this is playing off of that uh, ASM um, organized play to kit thing that you do. It's like an ultimate encounter for for uh, for web warriors or whatever. For uh, Peter Parker, you place all these cameras down and you get. Okay, let's just continue to read this. But this is really cool. While within three of a camera token, allied characters gain one additional power when they deal damage to an enemy character with an attacker superpower. Remove all camera tokens from the battlefield during the next clean phase. Now, why this is cool. Web warriors do have an issue building power outside of being attacked, right? Um, they're not really an attrition team. They are a they're a scenario team mostly, right? Well, with this card, well, now you can play a little bit. If you position this properly and, and, and place the camera tokens in the right spot, um, 
this is a way for you, hey, listen, if you do a couple of spenders and you do some damage, like, for example, let's go with Miles Morales, right? You spend two power. Let's say, for example, you don't have enough power to do the spender, which drops the objective tokens, and then you can't pick up the objective. Well, guess what? If you net a damage now, as, as far as I'm reading this, as long as you net a damage, you will gain a power back. So now what happens is your opponent drops a token, and now Miles Morales can now pick up that token now because he got the power back because he did a damage. So this is really good for Web Warriors. Do I, 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 I do kind of see them playing this card. It's funny because this card is very thematic. Like, you know, putting out the cameras and all that stuff, you know, being Spider-Man. Um, but it's very useful. Um, and for a turn, I could just gain additional power just by playing a little bit of an attrition game. Um, yeah, I mean, especially on all webbed up terms, I mean, getting additional power, why not, right? I mean, really good stuff here. I see this card being played a lot, and you just it's played for the entire turn, and then during the cleanup phase, you just remove everything. Um, and it's only one power cost, right? So each web work just spend a power, which, is this, which isn't a big deal. As long as they're doing damage, hey, you're doing a thing. So that's just this is really good. I think this is going to be a card that a lot of web warriors players look at and try. And uh, I think it would be a lot. I think it's going to be successful. Um, I think this is a really good card. And um, that's very exciting for the web warriors, honestly. That's really good. Uh, founding members. Uh, surprise webhead. Okay, this is the other card that we saw. Any number of Valite spider Foes characters may spend two power each to play this card. Choose an enemy character. Each character that... Oh, wait a freaking minute here. Any number of Valite, any number of Valite spider Foes characters may spend two power each to play this card. Choose an enemy character. Each character that spent power may immediately perform in attack with the cost of zero targeting the chosen character. Okay, so... I'm glad I slowed down and read the card because I was sitting here thinking to myself, this is similar to like uh, Wakanda Forever. I mean, it is. It is and it, it is and it isn't. Now, I'm trying to remember Wakanda Forever and Siege. Uh, I believe with those cards, and now I could be wrong. If I'm wrong in the chat down below, please comment down below. I believe Wakanda Forever and Siege, you can target any character. I could be wrong because I'm not looking at the cards right now. I don't re remember off the top of my head. This one. It has similarities to both by spending the power to do an additional attack with the cost of zero, but you need to choose one character. Now, where this can... This is a very good card, by the way. Don't get it twisted. This is a very damn good card. Um, what can happen, though, is if you do one-shot a character with one attack, which can happen, The rest of the attacks aren't going to... So, the point I'm trying to get across... The rest of the attacks aren't going to happen, right? So, if, let's say, for example, I have three spider foes around one character. And all three spent two power, okay? My first attack one-shots the character. Well, since the target is the original character... Is the, is the character that I chose. Those attacks now don't happen for the other two. And they just spent two power. Now, granted... Do I... Is that going to happen... Pro, you know, maybe more likely than not, probably not, right? Maybe you'll get two attacks off and a third attack doesn't happen. Or maybe you just get all three, and all three happen. But there is that potential of one character one-shotting that, that, that character you targeted, and then the rest of the characters don't, don't get to attack. Now, why that can be bad is, well, I just spent two power, and it's like, damn, I, now I'm out of two power. I could have used that for something else. Um, so it is a very good card, but I wish they would have had this being... Um, you targeting other characters, just my opinion. Um, so, again, in the comment section down below, definitely uh, confirm if I'm right on that. But, but yeah, like, uh, really good card here, really nice. Uh, Web Warriors, I mean, they have some of the best tactics cards in the I mean, they have really good tactics cards. I would say, like, Brotherhood and them are, like, both the affiliations I look at that have very thematic and cool and good tactics cards. This just adds on to it. This is a really good tactics card. Um, gives them another another chance to attack someone and uh, to build some power up and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't hate it at all. It's just the fact that it's so restricted to one character gives me cause for pause because, well, damn, like I just explained the scenario to you. If that character's dazed, no one else is going to be attacking him, right? Um, granted, you got the dazed and one character gained the power. That's pretty damn good on, a, on an attack that it's an extra attack. Really damn good. Not complaining about it. It's just that can't happen. Um, but, yeah, guys, no, really good stuff. I'm very excited for this box to come out. Uh, comes out next month, I believe May, May 19th, I believe. Yeah, in about a month. 
Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts down below on Electro and some of these Spider Falls cards that were revealed today. Well, this week. Uh, give me your thoughts down below, guys. And, uh, you know, uh, definitely like, dislike, comment, subscribe. Do all those things y'all got to do. Share the video, you know, whatever y'all got to do. And I'm always going to make Marvel Cards protocol content. I will catch you guys on the next video. Keep playing MCP. I'll catch y'all later.